Hey guys, Joe here, and let's have a seat here with the Ruger Security 9. Thank you guys for checking out this video. If you like it, maybe consider getting subscribed, hitting that like button, maybe use my Amazon affiliate links down below, which will allow me to check out stuff like this Ruger pistol at the range when I can buy them. That would be awesome, and you get some more outdoor content, which you guys seem to enjoy. Now, we're looking at a little bit of a different background here. That's because I have computers all torn apart behind me and on the other side on my desk, so I figured I'd do this here, as well as the fact that it allows me to sit at a different angle and record at a different angle. So, let's change it up a little bit from time to time, huh, guys? Yeah, that's what I thought. What you're looking at is a Ruger Security 9. It's a gun I've been meaning to make a video on for a while. I just haven't gotten around to it. First thing we'll do before we look at the box is safety check it. Always safety check your firearms. The best way to do it is to actually lock your slide open and check it. And yes, I will say this every time I show off a firearm because I want you guys to understand that you need to take care of your firearms and treat them as if they're the most impressive thing in the world. It's the best tool you'll ever buy. Yes. So, let's take a look at the box. You get a plain cardboard box, perfectly fine with that. Inside this plain cardboard box you get a plastic tray insert, which is nice. All your documentation, which is convenient, a gun lock, and a second magazine. Hey look, it's its own background. That's awesome. Now, let's take a look at the pistol. This is a hammer-fired, even though it doesn't look like it, has a concealed hammer, but a hammer-fired 9mm pistol, made by Ruger. And Ruger makes some decent stuff. And just like anybody else, they've made a couple of turds in their days, but this one seems to be doing really well. In terms of size, I would say it's kind of um, almost the reverse of a 19X. It's taking a mid-size frame and putting a full-size slide on it, whereas a gun like the Glock 19X has a full-size frame and a short slide. It's still not a super long one. It's only a 4-inch barrel, but it's it's definitely weighted up top and to the front so something to keep in mind if you're looking at one for a purchase this is a polymer lower with a steel upper as you can see it's black on black there are quite a few different color combinations including a really cool golden black that i wish we had so i could show it to you unfortunately we don't taking a look at the exterior it has a couple of unique identifying marks uh well not identifying marks but identifying um design choices and that includes the serrations which come up and then curve forward don't know if they mean it because you know your fingers do that or they just do it because they wanted to differentiate the pistol either way i like it it looks good one of the unique things is the concealed hammer you don't see that on pistols much you actually in fact you haven't seen it since the 1903 pocket hammerless or that generation and that style this does have a u-notch rear sight with a single white dot front sight it's dovetailed in so i know that there are aftermarket sights especially if you don't care for this style which i personally do not i think that's dumb um leave it in the comments if you care for something like that where it's a u white notch looking at it it does nothing to help me pick up the dot because i'm using the sides of the sight not the bottom of it that's just that's that's absolutely stupid and it can throw off your elevation aim if you're uh cross-eyed dominant so yeah this one does have a 1913 style Picatinny rail. It's pretty generous and it allows you to mount a pretty decent sized laser or light. Like all of the current manufacturers, it does have stippled side and front straps or side panels and front straps. Unlike some of the guns, these are not interchangeable with other sizes, but that's okay. It actually has a pretty darn nice feel in my hand. And as you can see, even though it's a shorter frame, I'm still able to get three fingers, plus a trigger finger, but three fingers on the grip. Little undercut here for the trigger guard, which is nice. It allows you to get that grip, because if you were down here, you'd obviously see you'd be wandering off the edge. So Ruger thought of that. That's why you're able to get a good grip on a short frame. Coming to the front of the trigger guard, if you actually look, it actually is going down a little bit, so it gives you more room in the front. So if you have a gloved hand, that will allow you to get in there. The front of the trigger guard is serrated and it's horizontally, which is again what you want because when you're holding the firearm in your shooting position and you go to recoil and you hold it this way, like I do uh, a lot of times when I'm going faster, actually you've seen in my videos, I actually take this finger off most of the time, but when I do hold, I do wind up with my finger up here. So it's nice to have this to help prevent muzzle flip. And yeah, when you're mag dumping, it does make a difference. This one does have 
a external manual safety up here, kind of like a 1911. However, it's the back of the safety that moves, not the front. So when you're going to sweep it down, it works like a 1911. However, it takes a little bit more thought to put it on because you actually have to move the back of it, not the front. And the slide lock slide release is generously sized. You can see it's got a nice angle to it, so you can definitely get there and drop it well. It's also flat on the bottom, which helps when you're locking the slide back. Allows you to get a better grip on it or a better thumb on it. Ha. Mag release is on this side. It does look like it is reversible. I have not tried doing it. The rest of the gun is not ambi, so I don't know many people that would go through all the effort of doing that. When I shoot lefty, I've learned to just drop it with my index finger. So, not a big deal, but it's something to keep in mind. Next thing to talk about is the trigger. This is a single action only pistol. It does not have double strike capabilities, nor does it have a decocker of any sort, because again, it is single action. It does have a trigger mounted safety as well, so in conjunction with that and that, you have two safeties plus the internal drop safety. Zang. So, let's take a look at the trigger pull. Very short take up to the wall and crisp break. Reset. Pretty much all the way out. Which means you're going to get a consistent trigger because it's not going to change too much. But it is pretty much all the way out. Which is good for someone like me who slaps his trigger. If you slap your trigger a lot, that's going to come in handy. So as for left-handed usage, it's a little difficult to get to the safety release for my index finger. I have slightly bigger hands, so that could be it. I could drop it pretty easy with my finger, but I can't re-engage it that way. So I would be doing a two-hand engagement. Uh, or, you know, just do that. It disengages pretty well. Now, a lot of times when I shoot lefty, I'll re-engage the safety with my right hand. But dropping it shouldn't be a problem. External extractor, which is nice. And again, that concealed hammer, which is interesting. I can see why they did it. They wanted to bring the rear sight back a little bit more as well as make this a good carry piece. By not having anything that it can snag on, you can't accidentally bring the hammer back to release it. It also makes it safer to carry this in a cocked and locked position. And I have finally found another gun, like the 1911, that you cannot engage the external safety unless it's racked. So yes, that in conjunction with that actually means that this gun, like a 1911, is designed to be carried cocked and locked. Okay, time to get into the disassembly. So as you can see here, I have the pistol with the magazines out. Before we start, we're going to do another safety check, so go ahead and stick your finger in the hole. That's what she said. Stick your finger in the magwell. You can see that there is clearly no ammunition in this firearm. Now the Ruger Security 9 is slightly different from your standard pistol in that the cross pin here is flush mounted on both sides. There's not even a little tab to push. So it's a little bit difficult to get out. You can do it using a armorer's tool, a flat tip screwdriver, or if you're in the field, the edge of a casing, as long as you can get the casing down in there. I'll show you real quick how to do it. You're gonna bring the slide back approximately, or they say exactly, 1 16th of an inch. You see that little gap there? You just need to line up flush, take the edge of a screwdriver, again, being careful not to do what I just did, it's okay, I didn't scratch it. And then you're going to lever out the cross pin. And it will come all the way out, so be careful. You don't want to lose that. Next thing to do is just pull this off since the hammer is concealed. And we will get back to the slide in a second. Taking apart, excuse me, the frame in a second. Taking apart the slide, you just take off the recoil spring. As you can see, it is captive. It's also very small. And it's not double nested or anything, but I haven't heard any complaints from anybody I know that shoots one. It is a polymer guide rod. Again, I'm sure there's upgrades. There's probably a steel one out there or a double nested one. Who knows? I haven't examined that much, but this could be potentially a longevity problem. Some Glocks that have the plastic guide rod can have failures after a few thousand rounds. So if there is a metal one out there, you should probably get it. If I can find one, I'll put it in the description. Taking out the barrel, just like any breech lock pistol, you just pull it forward and then back it out the bottom of the slide. Slightly different design than the standard. Number one, it has a weird flaring here. I'm not sure why they did that because the barrel is actually the same height. It's just deceptive because it's on the screen. Maybe it allows it to fit in there 
a little bit more flush or it allows gases to escape more easily. Not 100% sure, but it is your typical browning tilting action with a breech lockup style. Now breech lockups lock up here instead of having lugs like a 1911. Will he ever stop telling us that? No. No, he won't, Susan. Looking at the inside of the slide, you can see some finishing marks there. It's not terrible, but there's definitely some marks there. That's definitely from a finishing tool because they're circular. They're not scratches from the slide being manipulated. Breach face looks nice. Everything else looks pretty good. Finish is okay. The finish is decent, and the scrawl on the side is thankfully not uh, colored even though it is laser etched. Taking a look at the frame, it is very light, but they also went the extra mile of putting in full length frame rails, which is a very nice feature to have. This helps the slide stay even. There's no skipping in here where the mag release or the, excuse me, not the mag release, but the slide lock slide release would be in the middle of it. It's non-interrupted on either side, which helps give you the ability of having a much more reliable firearm. So there's your internal hammer. Like I said, it's just a concealed hammer. It's not an actual hammer. It's also not an army hammer. And I just reset it to make it easier to reassemble the pistol. Knocking out the pins will allow you to take the fire control group out. So it's very simple, very easy to work on. And overall, the build quality of the frame is about on par with anything I've seen. So very good there. So one thing I noticed when I was taking it apart was that little bump there. You can see it behind my finger. That's for the trigger to stop. It's a trigger stop. I'll demonstrate it once the top is back on the gun. But I didn't notice it at first and it's pretty interesting. So, And as you can tell from my sporadic breathing here, I do apologize. But uh, yeah, I'm getting a lung infection again probably. So it's not that thing, but it's, it's annoying because I just got over it and it's coming back. So yay me. The fit and finish on the frame is nice. It's not overly complicated. It's not over overdone, which is good. Again, you can see the molding in here is a little bit lighter. You can see, actually see how much material they took off. Those aren't mistakes in the plastics. Those are actually the reliefs for the Picatinny rail. So that is, that is quite a bit of shaving down they did there to get the overall weight down. This makes up for everything though, because having a nice fully metal enclosed fire control group is what's going to make sure the gun lasts and works for a longer period of time because obviously this is where all the pressure is contained in here where the chamber sits as well as down the mag you know you don't want to have weak structures here if this was all plastic you could have potentially blowouts and things of that nature it doesn't happen as often as people think but it is a possibility so it needs to be said so that's the field stripped Ruger Security 9 slide, frame, spring, barrel, and cross pin. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. Now let's go ahead and put it back together. Do that by grabbing your slide, taking your barrel, and tucking it back in the way it came out. Simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Make sure that you get the right end into the guide rod area, otherwise it won't close. Very simple, make sure the spring is flat. Take your gun, take your frame, take your slide, slide them back together. And you don't have to come back very far, you just have to come back so that that is lined up again. You will see this is concentric. It's not a circle. You'll see that there's a flat edge here. Flat edge down, flat edge down. So you put this in. Very simple reassembly. I wish the disassembly was that easy. Maybe if they had made it so that it had just a little bit of room in there for you to get a fingernail behind it or something, it'd be a very, very easy pistol to work on. So that's the Ruger Security 9. I think it's a very well-priced pistol. It's in the $300 range-ish, depending where you go. It holds 15 plus 1, which is very nice. Uh, there is a compact version, which holds 13 plus 1, also very nice. It's hammer fired, which means it has a lot fewer parts inside the slide. It is supposedly a pretty reliable pistol, however, I haven't owned one yet. I'd like to pick one up, and that's where you guys come in. Subscribe down below, that's going to help me get uh, some ad revenue, especially during this lockdown period that a lot of you guys are in. If you guys are locked down, you don't have anything better to do, watch some videos. There's almost 800 on this channel. Help it grow, and we can do stuff like this. There will be a tech video that will be coming out on Wednesday, 
and you should have seen one yesterday as well so I'm gonna be interspersing some tech some guns some cars I'm gonna get back into mixing that stuff up so that'll be really cool uh, if you don't have an iFixit kit I will link one in the description below these things are a lifesaver I have two of them mainly because I lost my other driver somewhere but uh, I have two of them so yeah give me a thumbs up like the channel subscribe to the channel tell your friends about the channel watch some other videos and as always I'll talk to you later.